And now, the Seaville, a small town murdered by Scott Cherry. The family liaison officer, Jackie Hartwell, unearths more information about the death of Abby Hudson. Did forensics have Abby's smartphone? It was bagged up in the evidence room, next to a copy of her mum's book. Forensics took it while I was there. So why wasn't it there when I looked earlier? You must have missed it. No, no, someone must have signed it out. P.C. Howell, D.C. Briggs, D.S. Kinning, ex-drug squad, retired two days ago. Morning, Jackie. Hello. Just reading the pathology report. Doesn't look like the cuts on Abby Hudson's hands are defence wounds. Oh, right. Now, more consistent with her trying to drag herself out of the rock pool as she was being hit repeatedly over the head. So no DNA onto the fingernails? Afraid not. Go on. Hmm? Do you mind if we take another look at the CCTV from the botanical gardens? Okay. There you go. Oh, okay, so um, this is the foyer at 9.14. Connie Hudson's just finished a concert and is busy signing copies of her book in the terrace suite. And there's Mike Webb. Walking towards the main entrance in a bit of a hurry, but then, yeah, see, he stops. And that's what I couldn't understand. If he's just killed Abby Hudson, why doesn't he make a quick getaway? Didn't want to look suspicious. Yeah, but he waits for at least a couple of minutes. I think he sees something. This is CCTV from outside uh, for the same time, 9.14, and I think this is what you can see. A car approaches the main entrance, stops, and then drives off a few minutes later, after Webb's left. Oh, right. Uh, and the same car comes back, slows down again, <laughs> and pulls away. I run a PNC. And? The owner's Bill Kinning. This is about an hour before Bill turned up for his leaving do. Gov. Strange. Yeah. Jackie, do you mind if we discuss this later? I'm about to have a meeting with the media officer. We need to work out how we're going to protect Connie Hudson. The press are going to be all over her, so... Uh, look, I'm sure Bill's got a perfectly reasonable explanation. Well, the thing is, when he came in yesterday to clear his desk... Like I, I said, mean, uh, Jackie, we'll talk about it later, yeah? Okay. Sorry to interrupt, Gov. So Lawrence just called to say she's stuck in traffic. Oh, right. The press are desperate for information. She wants you to call her as soon as you can to discuss a holding statement. OK, I'll do that now. Uh, in the meantime, you two had better go and warn Connie. Wouldn't surprise me if the press are outside her house already. Jackie? Gov? Hopefully we'll have arrested Abby's boyfriend by the time we do a press conference. I'll keep you posted. Come on, Harry, <laughs> Hi, mate. Hi. Uh, everything okay? Not really. Why didn't you tell me you went to the botanical gardens? I've got a press conference to sort out, so this is going to have to be quick. Bill? There's nothing to worry about, Bill. Even though you're on CCTV driving up and down outside the main entrance. Right, you're on your own. Wait, wait, wait. OK. Abby called. She was worried Mike Webb was going to find her and get violent, so she asked me to go and pick her up. Oh. I waited outside, couldn't see her, so I left. If this starts getting complicated, Billy... Why would it get complicated? Mike Webb went after Abby and ended up killing her. All you've got to do is find him and arrest him. Case over. I told that to Jackie. She's the one who spotted you on the CCTV. You okay? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do you think the press are going to be all over this? Hmm. Connie was a 60s pop star. Her daughter was a drug addict and prostitute. I'd say it's a tabloid gift. Ah, uh, they're bound to print all the stuff that's in her book. Sad. You have a number one. Everyone tells you you're going to be this big star. And it all goes wrong. Well, I think it went wrong for a reason. She says as much. Turning up drunk for recording sessions, falling off stage, getting into fights with musicians. 
set that kind of example, no wonder your daughter goes off the rails. Her daughter's all right. Is she? Growing up with an alcoholic mother. What is Laura? Early 30s, still living at home? She obviously puts her mum before herself, you can tell. The way she keeps looking at her, making sure she's okay. I would say she's bound to have issues. Why are we stopping? Jackie? Just one or two things we need to discuss. And I'd rather do it in private. Okay, so, starting at the beginning. You said you met the DI when he was over at Dudley Nick delivering a talk. Is that right? Yeah. And afterwards, you got chatting, said you wanted to work in family liaison, so he suggested you come and follow me around for a few days. Yeah? Jackie, what's this about? Had you met the DI before he gave that talk? No. So you didn't know him? No. So why lie for him? I couldn't find Abby Hudson's mobile in the evidence room, so I sent you to double-check. You said, whilst avoiding eye contact and displaying what I thought was a significant amount of displacement activity, that it had been there all along, that I must have overlooked it. Well, I didn't overlook it. I know I didn't. And you're in the log as being first there after me, so you must have put it there. I know you'd just been in a meeting with the DI. So what did he say, Tracy, eh? For a bloke, he's pretty good at reading body language, so I'm sure he could see how keen you were to impress him. He said he'd meant to take the phone to FSI for data retrieval, to get it fast-tracked and forgot. So, well, why didn't he ask you to take it to FSI? Why the evidence room? He'd been running around like a blue ass fly, was under all kinds of pressure, and realised he'd taken it about signing it out, so... Oh. He asked you to help. When he said he was under all kinds of pressure, did he say what he meant? That he was going through a tricky divorce. Don't ever lie to me again, okay? Sorry. Right. Let's go and visit the victim's family. I wonder how many other shoulders the DI's been crying on. He's been texting me all day, wanting to meet up, talk things through, saying he can't get me out of his mind. Well, we can meet up, Gov, talk things through. And you can tell me what you and Bill Kinning were doing with the victim's phone. There's a group of about ten or twelve standing outside Connie's house. The sooner we get the press conference out of the way, the better. There was even someone at the bottom of the garden, leaning over the fence, taking pictures. We don't know they were taking pictures, Mum. Well, you don't think the camera was a clue? Slutsfarbor 30 sekunders undersökning. Vi får ett par exklusiva erbjudanden som tack för hjälpen. They'll call back soon enough. Yeah, if they do, I'll answer. I can't put up with much more, Jackie. They've been outside my house since seven o'clock this morning, calling my name, phoning all the time. I'll talk to them before I go. Um, Connie, how would you feel about doing a televised press conference? Someone might know where Mike Webb's hiding, and if they see you making an appeal for information, they... They might decide to come forward. He's a drug dealer, Jackie. His mates are drug dealers. They're not going to cooperate with the police. They might if they've got a grudge against him. Yeah, could be worth a try. It's up to you, obviously. No. No, I can't. Sorry. Well, they just ask me what it was like having a daughter who was off the rails. It'll be just another chapter in the tragic life of Connie Hudson. It's always been like that. 
They were never interested in my music, just what was going wrong in my private life. I never, ever got the respect I deserved. As soon as I got dropped by my record company, and my husband left me. I fell. Oh, hey, come on. <laughs> You don't have to. You don't have to talk to anyone if you don't want to. I'm sorry, Connie. I didn't mean to make things worse. I'm being useless. No, you're not. Okay? Need a cup of... Oh, I'll get it. No. No, it's all right. I need to do something. Pull myself together. If the phone rings again... You've got my permission to use the F word. Okay. I won't be a minute. I watch her leave, unsteady on her feet, concentrated on keeping her balance. Maybe she's just tired from the stress of it all, but I reckon she's been drinking. Tracy's right. It's sad the way Connie's career ended as quickly as it had begun. <laughs> there are pictures all around the room of her in her 60s heyday. One of her on what looks like ready, steady, go, or top of the pops, in knee-high boots and mini-skirt hair and a little bob. She talks about it in her autobiography, the way they made her copy Twiggy's baby doll look and how she hated it. There are others of her with Tommy Steele, Marty Wilde, Marianne Faithful, and one from later, when she started a family. She's with her husband and the girls on a beach, it's the Blackpool photo that's in her book. They're messing around, laughing at the camera, looking like they're the happiest family in the world. How did you get on with Laura? <laughs> I think you were right. What? About her putting her mum before herself. She actually said as much. Said she'd never really had a lie. Mm. Well, it's common. The children doing everything they can to keep the alcoholic parent happy. They become overly responsible, terrified of abandonment, uneasy in relationships, hard on themselves. <laughs> it's a pretty long list. It's difficult, though. I've got friends who are always trying to come to terms with having an alcoholic parent, and half the time, I think they'd just be better off getting on with their lives. Sometimes it's like they're talking it up, using it as an excuse. You don't want them to be in denial. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. Just how messed up am I? And when you consider a lot of those symptoms are shared by people who suffered physical and sexual abuse. Mm. Oh, yeah. One interesting thing. Abby told Laura she was seeing a police officer. Oh, right. Did she give her the name of the police officer? I don't think so. Oh, uh, Jackie, hi. Yeah, everything okay? We found a body under a flyover at the Gravelly Hill Interchange. I see one male between 30 and 40 years of age. Has it been identified? Well, from the initial description, my guess is it's Abby's boyfriend, Mike Webb. Can you be there in about an hour? Jackie? Okay, good. What? Mike Webb's turned up. His body's been found under a flyover at Spaghetti Junction. And the investigation continues tomorrow. Uh, lots of response to this morning's programme. Jean emailed, I was teaching in Tottenham in the 70s and 80s where my young black girl students were facing the same problems I heard your two guests discussing just now in 2015. Very sad that we don't seem to have progressed at all in this area over the last 30 plus years years. And responses to Polly Vernon, Sarah said, we do not dress for men, here, here. Could not get this message through to a male colleague. Um, but then Jane Parsons said, Polly Vernon is talking nonsense. She says women don't ever dress to attract a man. Then talks about being mesmerised by Sandy in Greece, dressing up to get her man and wanting to do the same. Uh, tomorrow I'll be talking to Rola Hallam, medical director of a Syrian NGO on women and children there. Bye-bye. Woman's Hour was presented by Jenny Murray and produced by Louise Adamson. Now here's Big Lover with today's visit to The Listening Project. Hello, 
Education should open up a world of opportunity for your children. That's hard enough to find, let alone when your children have highly individual needs. And this conversation is between two parents who know all about that. Lorraine and Dale both have sons with autism. Dale's son Ryan is five and is at a school in Bangor. Lorraine's son Callum is nine and attends a school in Crumlin. Brian has a classroom assistant with him and Callum is in a classroom on his own with a teacher. And the parents both feel that the schools are doing the best for their kids but would like them to be in specialist schools. The funding is not currently available. Just for your information, Dale is married and Ryan is one of his two kids and Lorraine is a single mum, also with two kids, and her daughter has just been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. The support that they're giving... Ryan is brilliant mm. and I don't want to take it's anything away. It's the best away. that they can do in the situation. But they basically take him, when he starts to have an episode, they take him away. Yeah. Kids are not stupid, are they? Yeah. They see that. Yeah. His friends see it. Exactly. And they say, well, uh, hang on. Probably similar He's different. To He's different yeah. then, you know, to yeah. everybody else in the class because Ryan. he's getting special treatment. Yeah. With Callum, we had to do the same. We knew he was really struggling. We knew it was, you know, having an impact on his mental health, but... There's nothing else can be done. The school is doing everything that they can yeah. possibly do. One time I turned up at the school and he was standing in the corner of the classroom with a chair up in front of him like a caged animal with people standing guarding the doors to make sure he couldn't escape. And it was horrendous. And if, like Callum, the child can't cope in that, there is nowhere else for him to go. Yeah. And so that's why he ended up out of school completely out of school with no education whatsoever at eight years old for 13 months. The trauma of everything that happened to him, getting him back, he hates school. And that's what we don't want with Ryan. Ryan's not at that point I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. But we don't want him to get to that point. You see, Callum, he's had those couple of years and that were so traumatic that he'll never be able to go back to mainstream now. It but doesn't there. it annoy you and doesn't it upset you? Because it makes it, it refi- yeah, it's for the rest of their life, it, it's life yeah. changing. Callum's like nine now yeah. and it's affected, mm-hmm. it's probably affected his, his chances of making relationships and stuff like that. I worry about Callum as he gets older and I worry about, you know, when he leaves school and I worry about if he's going to be able to have a relationships and have a family and have friends. We're just starting along the path. Yeah. I want him to get the the best education he can get for his level, and I don't think that's too much to ask mm-hmm. from any any parent for the child. You know, I want him to fulfil his to own fulfill potential. whatever he wants yeah. to do, whether yeah. he, he makes it or not. But he, he should be given every opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Same yeah. opportunity as any child Anyone that doesn't else. have. ASC. And that's yeah. that's what my hopes are that he can mm-hmm. turn around and say, Dad, I tried. Yeah. I tried. I did my best. And now I'm just going to go over here and build a sandcastle. <laughs> I don't care. But as long as he says that he's... And that's what I want for him. Yeah. You know, I want him to, to be happy and get the most that he can get out of everything. Mm-hmm. You, you've lit the blue touch paper in me. Uh, you know, it was burning anyway, but I think mm-hmm. you've set a fire because I've known, no, I, I, I've known nobody in yeah. this situation. You learn the most from other parents. Yeah. You can learn the ins and outs from leaflets and information on the internet. But the real issues, you learn that from other parents. You can't get that anywhere else. Lorraine and Dale were recorded by Connor McKay at BBC Radio Ulster. And Fee Glover will be back with more from The Listening Project on Friday afternoon. The news is coming up next here on BBC Radio 4. Then Oliver Bullo meets Ukrainians whose family histories reflect the pride, suffering and rebirth of their homeland. A short history of Ukrainians in Britain in a couple of minutes. We had company from a small army of cockroaches, but we had chartered a boat normally used for livestock. 60 years of radio essays. My colleague, a seasoned producer who'd seen much of what there is to see in places like these, stepped away as the sadness he felt spilled out over his cheeks. Thousands of reports. She related quite calmly how her father was hounded to death by the Red Guards of Chema Mao's cultural revolution. From our own correspondent, Thursday mornings at 11 and Saturdays at 11.30, and then available on the BBC Radio 4 website.
And now the serial, a small town murder by Scott Cherry. The family liaison officer, Jackie Hartwell, unearths more information about the death of Abby Hudson. Did forensics have Abby's smartphone? It was bagged up in the evidence room, next to a copy of her mum's book. Forensics took it while I was there. So why wasn't it there when I looked earlier? Must have missed it. No, no, someone must have signed it out. P.C. Howells, D.C. Briggs, D.S. Kinning, ex-drug squad, retired two days ago. Morning, Jackie. Hello. Just reading the pathology report. Doesn't look like the cuts on Abby Hudson's hands are defence wounds. Oh, right. Now, more consistent with her trying to drag herself out of the rock pool as she was being hit repeatedly over the head. So no DNA onto the fingernails? Afraid not. God. Hmm? Do you mind if we take another look at the CCTV from the battalion? Press conference to sort out, so this is going to have to be quick. Bill? There's nothing to worry about, Bill. Even though you're on CCTV driving up and down outside the main entrance. Right, you're on your own. Wait, wait. wait. Okay. Abby called. She was worried Mike Webb was going to find her and get violent, so she asked me to go and pick her up. Oh. I waited outside, couldn't see her, so I left. If this starts getting complicated, Billy... Why would it get complicated? Mike Webb went after Abby and ended up killing her. All you've got to do is find him and arrest him. Case over. I told that to Jackie. She's the one who spotted you on the CCTV. You okay? Hmm? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Do you think the press are going to be all over this? Hmm. Connie was a 60s pop star. Her daughter was a drug addict and prostitute. I'd say it's a tabloid gift. Ah, they're bound to print all the stuff that's in her book. Sad. You have a number one. Everyone tells you you're going to be this big star, and it all goes wrong. Well, I think it went wrong for a reason. She says as much. Turning up drunk for recording sessions, <laughs> falling off stage, getting into fights with musicians. Set that kind of example. No wonder your daughter goes off the rails. Her other daughter's all right. Is she? Growing up with an alcoholic mother. What is Laura? Early 30s, still living at home? She obviously puts her mum before herself, you can tell. The way she keeps looking at her, making sure she's okay. I would say she's bound to have issues. Why are we stopping? Jackie? Just one or two things we need to discuss. And I'd rather do it in private. Okay, so... Starting at the beginning. You said you met the DI when he was over at Dudley Nick delivering a talk. Is that right? Yeah. And afterwards, you got chatting, said you wanted to work in family liaison, so he suggested you come and follow me around for a few days. Yeah? Jackie, what's this about? Gov. Strange. Yeah. Jackie, do you mind if we discuss this later? I'm about to have a meeting with a media officer. We need to work out how we're going to protect Connie Hudson. The press are going to be all over her, so... Uh, look, I'm sure Bill's got a perfectly reasonable explanation. Well, the thing is, when he came in yesterday to clear his desk... Like I, I mean, said, uh, Jackie, we'll talk about it later, yeah? Okay. Oh. Sorry to interrupt, Gov. So Lawrence just called to say she's stuck in traffic? Oh, right. The press are desperate for information. She wants you to call her as soon as you can to discuss a holding statement. Okay, I'll do that now. Uh, in the meantime, you two had better go and warn Connie. Wouldn't surprise me if the press are outside her house already. Jackie? Gov? Hopefully we'll have arrested Abby's boyfriend by the time we do a press conference. I'll keep you posted. Come on, Tony. Hi, Mace. Hi. Uh, everything okay? Not really. Why didn't you tell me you went to the Botanical Gardens? I've got botanical a... Gardens. Okay. There you go. Ah. Oh, okay, so, um, this is the foyer at 914. Connie Hudson's just finished a concert and he's busy signing copies of her book, 
in the terrace suite. And there's Mike Webb. Walking towards the main entrance in a bit of a hurry, but then, yeah, see, he stops. And that's what I couldn't understand. If he's just killed Abby Hudson, why doesn't he make a quick getaway? Didn't want to look suspicious. Yeah, but he waits for at least a couple of minutes. I think he sees something. This is CCTV from outside uh, for the same time, 9.14, and I think this is what you can see. A car approaches the main entrance, stops, and then drives off a few minutes later, after Webb's left. Oh, right. Uh, and the same car comes back, slows down again, <laughs> and pulls away. I run a PNC. And? The owner's Bill Kinning. This is about an hour before Bill turned up for his leaving, dear.